Right. Good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. The time uh, has come to uh, invite uh, into our studio Mr. Brad Alexander, bringing us his view for the week ahead. Happy Monday to you, Brad. How are you? I'm good. Happy Monday to you, Andrew. But is it though? <laughs> it's yeah. Well, it's all it's always curious on Mondays. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on right now. Um, I was just literally just getting ready to jump onto your show, and uh, you you tell me what the heck just happened to gold? No idea. From what I see, the the U.S. dollar index is dropping. <laughs> yeah, that's why well, I checked all the U.S. pairs as well to see if that was that was the case, and it's, it's a bit mixed. So I'm just again here here we are the experts coming on on the air right now saying hey what's going on. Uh, I could, exactly. I, Asking one another what's going on. I, I have to, to return the favor then. What is happening with crude oil WTI? It's been a while since I saw such a rally. Yeah. And, and again, it's, this is the funny thing is that I, I was doing a, a fundamental talk this morning and we're talking about OPEC and they, they've actually decided to hold their 400,000 barrels, which in theory should put a cap on the price or even slow it down, which it, it actually hasn't. The thing right now, it's a big, I mean, not long ago, you asked me about, um, you know, in inventories on, on oil. And I said, well, no, it's not right now. It's a demand story. Well, it's switched around these days. It's now yeah. a supply story. It's, it's supply and demand like the, like the good old days. Um, but unfortunately, right now, um, supply is lagging behind demand. So it's, it's going to be a bit of a volatile ride for the next little while until, uh, until we get things sorted out. OPEC has, you know, said, uh, you know, we, we've got enough. We're doing enough production. Um, so basically, they, they, what they're saying is they want the prices to increase because, as we as we talked about, air travel's increasing a bit. Uh, might even be we, we might even be flying, uh, you know, th there's a few shows coming up pretty soon. Um, winter's coming, which always increases the the demand on oil. That's that's a no brainer. Uh, and as you've talked about many times, the price of natural gas is uh, has gone crazy. So a lot of um, there'll be a lot of replacement oil versus natural gas. I mean, I heard a statistic this morning uh, on Bloomberg. They were saying, in, in theory, in, in, with energy to energy, um, natural gas is trading about $190 per barrel. If you can, if you compared the actual, um, you know, BTU output, if you if you will. So, it's uh, oil is is underpriced in theory based on the demand and supply in the world right now. So it's a bit tricky. That, of course, is um, an uncertainty with the U.S. economy, with the prices of oil going up. So there's lots going on this week. It's uh, it's and incredible. We've got some technical opportunities, but it's a lot, again, a lot of fundamentals this week. If you top that up with the, with the NFP day, yeah, with the NFP week, and with uh, Joe Biden uh, speaking and with other FOMC members uh, speaking this week, is madness. We have two interest rates uh, as well. What have you discovered for this week? What's your view for the week ahead, uh, Brad? It's a very brave view if you have one. I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, that's that. I know you guys were just talking about the NFPs a few minutes ago. Let me, let me if I just share my screen here. Let's take a quick look at the fundamentals for the week. Let's we'll come back to that in a second. And as you, as you just said, I mean, OPEC, we now know about if I quickly go through the, the calendar. Um, you see, I've got the Forex factory calendar on because I find that to be reasonably accurate. Um, you know, we've got, as you said, we've got uh, Australia and New Zealand doing interest rates. I'll probably I'll probably get up early tomorrow morning to see what's going on there and maybe try to trade it. And as you mentioned today, this week is the non-farm payrolls. I mean, the non-farm payrolls is more important than than most coming up because uh, the Fed needs to make some decisions. Um, I did hear today that Jerome Powell has got a very sort of low threshold for uh, in bringing up his tapering. He, he doesn't need to see a massive um, employment number. He just needs to see something that's decent before yeah. he'll say, okay, yeah, we're going to start tapering. So let, let's see whether that means rising interest rates earlier. Probably not. But um, I know you guys were chatting earlier about, uh, you know, guessing the non-farm payrolls. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually in your camp as well. I'm thinking this number is going to be lower than 490 or, uh, or 460. Yeah. I know the official rate is 460. Forex factory is saying 490. Um, but who, who's to who's to argue with them? 188,000 so expected according to uh, investing.com. So we're there or thereabouts. 
Yeah, exactly. If you look at the MetaQuotes calendar, it's minus 390 or something silly like that. I actually told a client this morning, please ignore it. Um, <laughs> it's a bit of, we have a part, <laughs> bit, bit of a joke. Most of the calendars have it reasonably correct, as you just said. Um, but I, I, won't, I won't go down that road. One calendar that uh, we, we often look at because it's got multiple languages is always wrong. Um, let's not go down that road right now. So <laughs> I, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm like you, I, I'm guessing um, 250 to 300. So um, I'll, I'll say 280 is my guess for the non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate they're, they're suggesting 5.1%. Uh, I don't think it's, I think we're, we're going to be around 4.9 again, my guess, because there's, That's there's good. still uh, some it, 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 with this pandemic um, they're finding it very difficult to actually determine the exact figure with the uh, unemployment rate. And it's always sort of a, almost a finger in the air kind of thing. Um but they're still talking about labor shortages in the U S um, you know, in hospitality. And again, like everybody now, truck drivers, we talked about oh. this last week where the ports in Los Angeles, you know, if you can actually get your container off the ship um, there's no, there may not be a driver to take it into uh, you know, Toys R Us or wherever, or, or good, good, good tires, wherever it happens to be going. So uh, you know, now they're talking about a European um truck driver shortage. So we've got labor issues all over the world. So getting back to the, the point, I see that unemployment rate being, uh, well, I'm st I think 5.1 is high, but I'm still going to say about 4.9. That means it's good for the US dollar. But when we have the NFP, it's not just the uh, non-farm payroll uh, numbers that uh, affects the direction of the dollar. It's just, just the unemployment rate. We're also going to have the average hourly earnings, which yep. are expected to, uh, to increase by 0.4% for September. And year over year, for September, 4.6%. Is that realistic in your view? Um I think it is because a lot of people who are coming back to work now are able to demand higher wages. You know, and I, I see this number increasing over the next few months, especially if you're a truck driver, as we've discussed. So I, I don't, oh, yeah. I think that's, I think that's realistic, but we'll have to see on, on Friday. All right. Uh, right. Chart analysis. Do you have any analysis? Yeah, let's, let's take a look and see what we've got. Um, yeah. Well, just before we came on, we we're looking uh, and you, you can see where I was going with this. I was watching this downtrend on gold for some time now. Um, and I mean, you can see you can see what's happened. It's broke through the trend line, broken through the trend line and uh, came back and retraced. But in the last uh, well, this is our four hour candle. So uh, in the last little while, gold has taken off. So whether that's and again, literally I've just come on. Um, I did this analysis this morning and this, this, this big green candle has taken me by surprise and I haven't done the research to find out why, whether it's the U S dollar or whether it's gold. I mean, I'm like you, I've got Bloomberg on right now and, uh, they're not mentioning anything about it. So I'm not really sure why gold is, has shot up. Um, it'll make, a, it'll make a friend of mine very, very happy. He's just bought some real gold. I won't tell you how much. Um, because so he's, he sees, he's a professional trader in Asia. He sees a stock market crash coming. And he's bought gold as a hedge against inflation. And I, I said, well, take a look I at the technicals. To, that, to be honest, I, I see some sort of a crash coming as well, because we saw the uh, the stock market selling off sharply in the last week or so. Today doesn't look any better either. They open to the downside and they're accelerating the move to the downside. I see it yep. coming as well. The question is when. Exactly. Let me. Let's take a quick look at the U.S. indices, and I spotted uh, obviously the same thing. Um, we're looking at the uh, at Wall Street is well below the 100-day uh, moving average, and it's, it, we've got some. Uh, this is the daily chart, so we've got a day, big day down, big day up, and a big day down again. So Friday was good, but it's come back down again. If I just quickly look at all the indices, you can see there where we, we are. Lots of red, lots of red. Um, and it's it's a bit frustrating because we spent here's the S and P 500. And you can see my little yellow boxes. And we spent the entire year buying the dip. And man, it, it went really well. Um, lately, though, well, sorry, that, that dip is a bit too dippy, <laughs> if, I can, if I can coin a phrase. So right now, we need to see what, you know, what's going on. And I think what, again, it's, it's getting back to a lot of uncertainty. We want to see what's happening with the Fed. The Fed won't make a decision until at least Friday when they see the non-farm payrolls. Um, and one more little thing that's crept into our world again, U.S.-China trade relations. Um, that's reared its ugly head just today. Uh, what just, trade relations? Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, if you up up until the pandemic, the big news, you know, all the way through the uh, 
um, the Orange administration was news about U.S. China. Everything, every tweet, every every utterance, every whatever was about U.S. China trade relations, and it affected the dollar, it affected the indices, it affected a lot of things. Um, and now it's back again because apparently the Chinese are not living up to their end of the bargain. Um, so and the Americans, you know, pretty much don't know. They, in so many words, don't know what to do about it. They can certainly suggest that they live up to their end of the bargain, but they haven't said what they're going to do if they don't. So uh, I see this as being headwinds with with the equities and um, um, you know the indices, of course. I mean, the other story you guys talked about Facebook on the last show. Um, you know, it, oh, I talk about Facebook every day, uh, Brad, and you know, you know why? Since they changed their advertising policy, I'm getting crippled basically. So there we go. Well, you love <laughs> you love the news from the weekend. Did you did you see why the the shares are tanking? They've got a whist a whistleblower has come out and uh, basically blown the whistle on um, basically saying that they put their profits ahead of their customers, and she was quite quite upset and quite aggressive when I saw a, a snippet of the interview this morning on on Bloomberg. So she she says she left because of the stress of uh, trying to change the culture. So it doesn't look good for Mark Zuckerberg and the gang. If uh, who if can believe that a Fang stock, yeah, that grew more than the entire stock market in the <laughs> shortest time possible, cares mainly about the profits and not the clients? Oh come <laughs> on! Brad. Oh come on! Yeah, exactly. I thought. Well, I mean, they're they're still. I mean, I'm not defending, you know, or, or going against this this lady's views, or or even defending Facebook. They are uh, a large corporation with shareholders to uh, to appease and to you know to to keep keep happy. Um, they have to make a profit, and uh, it's, I mean, you know, you, 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 it's like Marmite. You either love them or you hate them. I mean, Facebook has a has a job to do. They have an amazing product. Obviously, as you just said, doing very well. They have the you know, they compare their their uh, you know there's revenue versus the GDP of a small country, and they're you know you're <laughs> you're you're in that that ilk. Um, you know, obviously they have to be seen to be uh, favoring their customers, but uh, in reality they've got a company to run. So you know, let's see what happens if more if more whistleblowers come out of the woodwork. Um, we may see more tanking Facebook shares. If a lot of people come in and say, "Well, I believe in Facebook. I'm going to buy the buy the dip." Here we go again. <laughs> It may well, eventually back. we're going to buy the dip. Just we don't know how low it's going to go. Exactly. Just... That, well, that's it. You never. Well, dips you never know. I mean, you know, I'm looking at this chart now. We could, we could predict it these days. Um, you know, it's it's a bit harder. And when you've got a fundamental issue like uh, like Facebook has right now, it's a bit a bit tricky. So, um, well, how do you see the Dow? How do you see the Nasdaq uh, going for the week? Because uh, the S and P's view is quite clear. How about the other two? Are they in the same uh, pot as uh, the S and P? Yeah. Well, you can see you can see the Nasdaq has actually dropped even more. I mean, you got a, a lot of people are abandoning um, tech stocks right now, um, and ironically, going back into energy. I mean, I just heard that report from um, a hedge fund on again. It was on Bloomberg about two hours ago. Um, they're they're really negative on on tech stocks, but uh, but quite positive on on the energy sector. So if we take a look at the uh, at Wall Street. You know, it's still down, but it's not as bad as the uh, as the Nasdaq, as we can see. So, I mean, the Nasdaq is obviously is not purely tech stocks. We know that the, the Nasdaq sort of avoids financials, but they're they're also heavy in in pharma. Um, and here's here's the question: is is the pharma run over? Because now we've got the the vaccines uh, sort of working, a few booster shots being being dished out. Um, you know, is that pharma run over? So that you've got perhaps two headwinds going on at the NASDAQ right now. Tech stocks are down and, um, you know, we're still, you know, is pharma a good cashing in on pharma? Is it time to take profit and get out? Uh, I think a lot of people are doing that as well. So, um, and you're, you're asking me when that's, when that's going to come back. I mean, we, we, we hit support from uh, back in July. Yeah. Uh, if it's going to break that, it's going to go even lower. Uh, how is the dollar index uh, doing in comparison to these three massive uh, indices? Because usually the dollar index moves in the opposite direction to the stock markets, right? Yeah, if we look at, um, I, I have to be honest, I don't have the actual index on here, but I have a, the U.S. majors. If we, if we t quickly take a look, it, it's a bit mixed right now. Um, the dollar is actually weak against against the Swiss franc. A bit weak against the yen, uh, weak against the pound. So it's weak 
sort of struggling against the euro right now. Um, but I, and oh yeah, you you were talking about I'm I'm as well I'm I as well am short dollar cat and quite happy about it. I think my account's yeah. up two percent right now. So yeah, you've got a bit of U.S. dollar weakness going on right now, which could could account for that bit of uh, gold strength. So you know we'll we'll have to see. I mean, something Let me else. Show you the, the dollar index on on my side. Yeah, there go we ahead. Go. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So we saw on a one hour chart here, we saw the dollar index uh, tanking and tanking for the last few trading sessions. Apparently, it hit a very important support level there, and we might see a correction starting. What's your view for the US dollar for for the US dollar index for the week, Brad? Can you Again, give us it, a it, it, You know, I see it getting a bit weaker, but the thing is, because you've got there, there are a lot of headwinds right now or a lot of in, in uncertainty with the US dollar index. You've got a lot going on in Congress right now. Um, they're talking about scaling back the uh, buy back better plan. Um, a lot of bits of it from 10 years back to five years to keep, you know, to, to uh, um, you know, get the number down. Basically, if they do that, that will actually, I think, increase the dollar because they, they had I th the market had baked in sort of a three trillion dollar buyback better plan. They may be cutting it back to one and a half trillion. I know it's it's hard to comprehend these numbers. That'll actually be a bit stronger for the dollar. But then again, you've got the non-farm payrolls, and you've got a, a lot of investors and um, you know traders waiting to see what's going to happen there. You've got you do have some news going on it, between now and then, but that's going to be the biggie. And um, again, the the Fed, Jay Powell. Are going to be making a lot of decisions based on what they see in the non-farm payroll. So, I don't see the the index moving too much until until Friday, and then we'll see, we'll see all hell breaking loose if uh, if our numbers are are correct. If you, you know your number, my number, uh, Tiran, uh, Rian, we all we all we all pick low lower than the actual figure. So we'll see what happens there. So far, I won twice. So let's see. I won with the crude oil inventories, and I won with another one with natural gas. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. I also traded a bit today. I did uh, fairly well. There was one that was giving me a bit of a headache, to be honest, but uh, I don't want to go into it right now. It was the, uh, the USDJPY that decided to, uh, to go against me, but I'm still, I'm still holding on. Okay. Very quickly, we talked about uh, dollar CAD. Well, gosh, this, isn't this a pretty chart? It looks like yeah, it looks like something a... standing over a puddle. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you don't. Yeah, you don't even need to see what it, <laughs> the names to know what it is. You've got the U.S. dollar CAD. Sorry, um, U.S. oil cash versus uh, dollar CAD, and you can see uh, how how pretty that is when I put some color on it. So you know exactly what's happening with the Canadian dollar. Obviously, WTI is heading up. Canadian dollar is getting stronger. I see a bit of a pullback there. Um, you know, this is, this is, these are the one hour charts, but you can see exactly what's happening there. If you're, if you're new to trading, memorize this chart because the Canadian dollar will always go, uh, almost always go with the, uh, you know, with oil and something else too, that I always find very interesting. And it used to happen a lot a little less frequently these days is that the Canadian employment, um, rates and, uh, employment change are announced identically on, on the time wise to the non-farm payrolls obviously it goes without saying that the non-farm payrolls take precedent they're much obviously the american economy is much much larger than the canadian economy um but you can also find that you can get really messed up if you're trading any canadian pair at the same time as the nfp and the canadian uh, employment rate and i found over history um you can actually do some nice trading once the dust settles after the nfp the market goes back and takes a look at what's happening in Canada. And you can actually make some nice trades if you're paying attention. If they both go in the same direction against a trend, you're it's great. You're, you know, you can really take some counter trend moves um, on the Canadian pairs and especially the Canadian dollar. Well, maybe not in the US dollar CADs if it goes the same direction. Um, you know, so you, you could have a perfect storm if the Canadian employment direction uh, news goes one way, the American goes the other way. Um, and we've had a change in oil. You could do a, you could do some really nice trading on Friday afternoon on uh, on dollar CAD. But it's it's that's always good fun. Lately, I've noticed that the Canadians have been shifting their um, release dates by about a week. So this has come back to being the the exact same day. So um, either either very either be very careful or or have some fun with it. We'll we'll see what happens.
I did well on the USD CAD, and I, I love this currency pair because it ranges on, on a very wide range for a long period of time. Yep. And it gives very good entries and, and exits. But as you said, when you get it uh, on the other side, it's not good. Yeah, let me go back. What, I, what I've done, uh, Andrew, I've made I've made a profile called Dot Financial so I can keep all my uh, bits and pieces here. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we can see we've got a, a bit of a downtrend that was fighting. It was fighting a downtrend. I've drawn, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on, um, we've actually broken support, haven't we? Which is very nice. We've got another level of support coming a little bit later. And, but I'm also going to keep eye on, keep an eye on this downtrend, uh, the lower trend line. Um, you never know when it hits there, but again, it, it's a fundamental story. Um, you know, you've got employment, you've got other news, you've got oil, um, you know, in the U S dollar, you've got the Congress going on. So you need to don't just rely on the technicals on, uh, on a pair like dollar cad right let's move on quickly and i've picked in, i've picked something that you guys already spoke about last uh, last show uh, taking keeping a good eye on um on cable obviously technically yeah. you've got some interesting things happening you've got a very right, right now look at that beautiful doji it's sitting right there on the fibonacci line i mean you, you couldn't uh yeah, i say you couldn't draw that picture it is a picture um <laughs> and hitting the lower the upper trend line as well i'm not going to go short on it just yet um because again there's too much fundamental going on right now but i'm definitely going to keep an eye on it we've had um you know you guys asked me a while ago well last show i think about the the problems in the in the, in the uk will it will it weaken the pound and i said no because it was a domestic issue um and it, it looks it, like i was right and then pound the pound has shot up i mean if you look at all the pound pairs Let's quickly go to my pound profile. It did, but only today, Brad. On Friday, it dropped. Yeah, no, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. It was, um, yeah, it was, if you look at Euro pound, um, you know, it was sort of consolidating. Yes, we had a lot of consolidation on Friday. So we had a, a couple of jumps with the pound against the Swiss. It was consolidating. But we've had, you know, right now we've got two against the Euro. And that's the one that I like to look at, of course. Um, you know, we've got eight, eight hours of, uh, of red candles, which is, uh, which is good if you're, so what we need to keep an eye on though, is where we're going with it. And we can see some serious, uh, support happening here, but we're not there yet. We've got a long yeah. way to go, but a bit of support happening at eight, eight, five, two, eight, five, three, um, and serious support happening around eight, five, one ish. So let's see what happens there. And the rest of it's uh, like, we just looked at, at, at cable. We're getting back to a very, uh, We've got a level here that, uh, well, we are at that level, but we just saw that, didn't we, on, on my other chart. So let's quickly go back to the uh, dot financial profile. So keep in, keep in mind that we've got a strong pound. I'm going to jump to the last chart, um, and you can see what's happened in the last four hours because of the strong pound. And this, again, if you're new to trading, you'll find out that the FTSE will react almost in, um, inversely to the pound because a lot of the, many of the, uk companies on the FTSE 100 are actually getting foreign income so if the pound gets stronger their their balance sheet actually looks a bit weaker so you can see right now on the FTSE which was looking a bit stronger has come back down but i, I think it's more to do with the pound than it has, has to do with um, um the actual uk companies but if you're looking at range trading here you've got some nice opportunities um happening here but uh, you know you need to see what's happening with the pound so very quickly, well, looking at euro dollar, same story on euro dollar. Yeah, um, I was looking to see if it would hit that upper trend line, but it's been re it's re retreated now on the last the last little candle. It didn't like that Fibonacci line. Um, the downtrend continues for the pound and the euro by the looks of it, guys. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah exactly. We cannot yeah. recover no matter what. Europe cannot recover no matter what the U.S. does. Yeah, it's, it's again serious inflation problems. They're, again, they're talking now about um, truck driver shortages in the in Europe. So the idea of the UK getting um, drivers from Europe to come over and work may be a bit pie in the sky because there may not be drivers who who can get back there. Um, and so one of, your, one, of, one of your favorite topics is uh, is UK employment, and they've now got the army driving trucks. Um, Dominic Rob was talking about getting low level convicts and prisoners to drive trucks. I mean. Last week, we talked about uh, literally an accident looking for a place to happen. And I think this will all end in tears if they go down that road. So let's see. Let's see what happens. You know who sorted out the, the problem in the uh, in the UK? You're not going to believe it. James Bond. They released the premiere four days ago, five days ago. It, it absolutely went through the roof. Since James Bond was released, 
the government decided to send the army on the street. Coincidence yeah, well, or not? <laughs> that, that, no, is that a coincidence? I don't know. But no. Right, ladies, gentlemen, traders, this was it for today. Wow, what a start of the day, isn't it? Tesla doing tremendously well. The dollar doing tremendously well. Gold doing tremendously well. How can this be? Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place for a new round of market talks. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and support us in delivering more great content. And until tomorrow, remember to trade responsibly and may all your trades be in the money. This video was sponsored by Marcus.com. Keep your finger on the market pulse with the news alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with news alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX.